Hi gang, welcome back to Corner Cupboard. Um, I was asked if I would do a short video on plying and then what to do with it once you're done plying it. Um, if you have a spinning wheel or drop spindle, either way, uh, the method is still the same. Um, you need to remember which way you spin. If you spin your wool clockwise, you need to ply counterclockwise and of course the reverse. If you spin your wool counterclockwise then you want to ply clockwise um, because you need to go the opposite direction and I see my puppy has decided to get into the video. Uh, <laughs> she's checking things out. Um, so today I'm going to show you plying on the Thrifty Fox spinning wheel. The plans can be purchased on Etsy. They were $15 when I bought them. It could be a little higher but the plans are worth getting. Uh, they're very well illustrated. Uh, there's no questioning what size, where to put it. It's, it's really easy to follow and they're good plans. Um, the only difference that I would say from the plans to the actual wheel is the weights on the wheel up here. Um, you need to put higher. The original plans show the weights down here but if you put the weights up on the top, you're going to find you have a lot easier turning on your wheel and you'll get a better spin because the weight helps turn the wheel. So for plying, um, I am using this purple and white wool that I've already done. The white is already a two-ply. I've already done this before. The purple is single. I've just taken this off, so I'm going to show you how to ply these together. And I chose these two colors because you'll be able to see, you'll be able to see the ply. And to ply these, you're going to do the exact same thing as you do when you're spinning. Um, in most cases, a lot of people use a leader string, which is I did red because of my white cabinet. Um, I still use a leader string, and I know what I'm doing. But if you're starting, use a leader string. A lot of people don't. That's fine. Either way works. And it's real simple. You're going to take your two pieces that you want to ply. Two, three, four. You can ply up to eight and get a real thick cord if that's what you're after. But for now, I'm just going to use these two. So you're going to take these two and put them in the loop like this. Now I have my balls of these two strings down here. I have these in a little bucket under the table because I have a cat and a dog that likes to play with my balls of yarn. So you're going to stick them in here like this and fold up a little because you want that to catch like this. And make sure you have enough space here because if you're too far back here you might have some difficulty until you get used to it. So move it out here on the end. Now, like I said, I spun this clockwise. I'm going to turn counter. So just start start going the opposite direction. No scraps. And as you can see, scrappies quit. Here's what's happening while my puppy takes off with my ball of yarn. So here's what's happening. Let me have that. Come here. You cannot have my purple ball. Let me have it. Thank you. You're such a good puppies. So here's what's happening. Can you see that? Yes, you can. So here's what's happening. They're twisting together to create a purple and white string. Now because the white was two ply already and I added a purple, now this is three ply. Now you can ply this as tight as you want it to be which you will get a shorter span on your distance in between your two colors. See, if I even if I just hand turn this, see how much tighter it gets? Or you can do it a little less tight and then you will get a wider span between your two colors. You can do this with any any yarn, any wool that you want to do it with. So, you do this until you're done. When you're done with your with your plying, then you're you and you'll have this on your down here. 
because if you keep doing this, and you keep going and keep going and keep going, then eventually, and you do the same thing as if you're spinning, you put this back onto your spindle or your drop spindle, whichever one you're going to do, because the method is the same. So you load this in. Now, when you're done plying, I have one already pre-done. Not purple and white, but this is two ply purple. I've already done this before. So here's what we're going to do. I like putting to ball off of here because I find that if I don't, then what happens is, is the spin continues to keep going and I end up with a big mess and then I spend too much time getting knots out. So put it to a ball right off of your spindle. Now here's the tool you need to have. And this is called a knitting netter. And here's now we made this. We didn't buy this one. We made this one. It's just it's a piece of a little piece of wood with a hole on each end, except the holes are in different places. This one down here is stationary. This peg is not going to come out. It's here. The posing stick is going to go in this hole. So the top is this way and the bottom is this way. Now, how this measures out is from the top of this peg coming down to the underside of the bottom peg is one yard. So if you start wrapping, if you start wrapping from the top and come over and you come down this and come under, this side is one yard of yarn. So here's how this goes. So you put your yarn right here on the side. Come over like this. Bring it down and wrap under. That's one yard of yarn. Now come to the other side. So it looks like that from here. So this, coming down this string, that's one yard. You come under, you come up here, that's another yard. So there's two yards of yarn. And you continue to do this all the way around. And I'm going to do this pretty quick. It's not a big, huge ball of yarn. That's why I chose it. And this is um, Suffolk wool, by the way. That's how come it's bumpy. And I like that. Suffolk wool is real easy to spin. So is Lincoln, Merino. So I'm going to wrap this around real quick. This is how easy this is. Almost done. Now when you're coming around on your end, where the en one end of your wool is needs to meet here. So if you end up too short here, you're going to have to back up around and come through. So here's what you do. You tie this off like this. Okay, now I didn't count that while I was wrapping it, so we don't know. Probably, oh, let's see, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, so probably 26 yards on here. So then what you do is have little pieces, maybe your scrap pieces of yarn, take them and put it like a tie here, a tie down here, and tie this off. Make little, just tie it off in a little group. You can do the figure eight if you want, if you're doing this for show. Um, I don't, so you just tie these off. And like in this case, because I have so much of this left, I can take it around and tie this off here, like that. So what's gonna happen is when you're done with that, this top peg that's loose, you pull this out and you take it off and here's what happens. So here is your plied yarn. Make sure you hold your space up here, which I didn't do. I let go. So just part that back out. 
to get all your loops straightened back out. So when you're done at this point, take this and take it to your kitchen sink. Now I still use Dawn dishwashing liquid. It's perfect. It removes grease. It removes the lanolin. If there's any left in your yarn, you want to get that out because that makes it really kind of sticky. Wash this in your sink. Turn it on cold. Put some Dawn dishwashing liquid on this and give it a good washing. And when you get it all nice and sudsy, turn your water to hot and rinse it out. What that does is going from an extreme cold to an extreme hot, what it does is it felts the yarn. Plus, if you have colored it, like I did with this, because I did color this a deep, deep purple. What it does is it locks the color into the yarn. You might see some color dye come out in your water, that's fine. But then when you're done, hang this up somewhere where it can drip. And then when it's finished, um, you will have some really nice, super cool yarn that you can crochet with, knit with, weave with. It's pretty awesome. Nice thing. I like it. Okay, so there you have it. If you have any other questions, please let me know in the comments. Uh, make sure you subscribe, follow along, and uh, let me know. And uh, share some of your uh, pictures and stories and how yours is done. Because really, there's no wrong way to weave. Or weave. Listen at me. To spin. There's no wrong way to spin. There you go. Thanks.